everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are finally all caught up with all the retro reviews. So we are, from here on out, I will only be doing the, reviewing the Dean Koontz books that, uh, that I'm that are new to rereading. I think Whispers was the last one. I read that last year, but there were other books in between there. I know it's confusing, but now we are up to date. We can go on with all the stuff that we are currently, me and Dilly are currently rereading. And this one uh, that we just got through with is The Servants of Twilight. I read this Joker way back in the way back. Um, the the first, well, I think only one time. I didn't remember anything about it. In fact, the more I was thinking about it while I was reading it, either I didn't finish it or I was in a very weird state of mind. I don't think I read it when it first came out, but I do remember I do remember reading it because I remembered certain plot points of it even there at the ending. Thing is, I did not remember how completely effed up this ending was. Um it is it's easily, as far as I can remember, Dean Koontz's darkest ending. Um, that's got, probably going to be a bit of a spoiler for people, but that I, I am so blown away by this book um, because he, Dean Koontz goes uh, somewhere that I, I don't think he's ever gone. Um, also, this is the first of his books with an intelligent golden retriever in it. And I'm not sure if Trixie had come into his life by this point in time. If you don't know, Trixie is the super smart golden retriever that he owned for for years. Um, was part of his family. He loved that dog so much that he even wrote some books from Trixie's point of view. I think there was more than one. I know what I got stuff flying around here. Um, I know there one was called I Are Trixie or I Am Dog, some something like that. But it's silliness like that. But um uh, and then it seemed like after Trixie passed away, Dean Koontz kind of lost his mind there for a while. For a while. He, he lost his way. And all those books right after Trixie passed, uh, that I think, are utterly awful. But we'll, we'll get to those books and we'll talk more about his life then. Now, in this video, um, since it's not a retro review, I wanted to stick to uh, the, this book. <laughs> That's funny considering I just rambled on about that stuff with Trixie, but um, in, in this book, I, I had a blast from, in, in fact, I honestly think it is my new Dean, my new favorite Dean Koontz book, and that is because of the ending. Uh, it's, the whole book is well paced, it's well thought out, it's well written. There is a very, very awkward four page sex scene. I'm not sure, I, w I can't wait to find out when Kuntz stopped having to write these sex scenes. From what I understand is that none of his books had sex scenes in it and his publisher asked him to add them um, because they were all the rage during that time. They wanted, you know, to have some everything. Action, adventure, uh, all, all that stuff and the sex. You know, the horror, the sci-fi, whatever it may be. But uh, with this one what you have is you have a mother and her child there's a crazy woman named Grace who thinks that the child is the Antichrist. I believe the child's name is Joey, and I can't remember the woman's name. I do remember that the uh, private investigator that they meet up with is named Charlie. Uh, of course, because you can't go through a Dean Koontz story without it, there's Insta Love. Um, the main, main lady, let's see here. Oh, it says on the back, Christine. So Christine ends up falling for Charlie right off the bat. Um, and they have this four-page sex scene that is just gnarly. I mean, it, not gnarly in a good way. Um, I rarely use gnarly in a good way, but uh, the it, it's a very disturbing uh, kind of uh, not really rough. Well, it is rough sex, but um, it's it, sometimes, most of the time, Koontz will try to be maudlin with his sex scenes, and he does things like ribbons of semen and her velvety insides and, uh, you know, her, her, her silky nether portal. No, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, they, you know, he goes there. Uh, but in this one, it's just, it's just raunchy. Um, and it's, it's very uncomfortable uh, reading any sex from Dean Koontz. Um, I, I don't know why. It just completely puts me off. I'm the same way with Stephen King, so... You know, it's not the fact that, you know, I've grown, I have fallen out of love with Koontz's books. It's just a matter of, it's very uncomfortable. I feel the same way about Peter Straub's sex scenes, um, that kind of stuff. But the, in, in this one, the, there's only four pages of this book that I didn't like. All the rest of it, I absolutely loved. 
There are some some conveniences. You're gonna find, you know, your sodium vapor street lights, your Bogan Villa pants, your uh, super smart uh, golden retriever. Like I said, we believe this is the first book. Um, if there were ones before this one, we either forgot about them or something. I don't know. Um, it, it's also funny that we caught on to uh, in the mask. Uh, there was a an older woman character named Grace. In this one, there's an older woman character named Grace, and I'm pretty sure there's two other books that I remember off the top of my head. I don't I don't want to name them here, but uh, I'm pretty sure that there's gr older women named Grace in there. Actually, I'll just go. One of them I believe is Odd Hours, and I may be completely wrong about that, but I know I'm close to the other one. <laughs> Either it's Greta or Grace, and I think the only reason I think it's Greta is because Greta is Dean Koontz's wife's name. Who knows? Anyways, um, but what I, like the main thing I wanted to get at here is I know the next book um, is na is called Darkfall, and I remember the plot of that one very, very well. In this book, there is a scene with, like, uh, demon rats kind of deals, like uh, red-eyed rats, bigger than normal, uh, very vicious, violent, that kind of thing. And that's what Darkfall is about. So, it, it's, it's interesting for me to see these things, because you, you look at uh, the, the House of Thunder. You go to the House of Thunder, there's a scene in there where they go to an abandoned town that is very creepy, uh, supposedly abandoned. And then after that, you have Phantoms, and Phantoms has a, ha, ha, the whole book is about an abandoned town. Um, there's two books that, one following the other, uh, where reincarnation is a theme, and we know at this point in Dean's, uh, in Kuntz's career, I'm about to call him his first name, <laughs> um, in, in Kuntz's career, that uh, what he would do while he was write, while he's writing is he will get an idea or he wants to expand on an idea and he'll write it down on a piece of paper over uh, on the side of his computer, typewriter, whatever era we're in. Um, we know that because in an interview he talked about how he came up with the idea of Odd Thomas. You can even find him talking about it on his website. I think it's on the Odd Thomas page. What happened was is uh, he was writing one book. I think I think it was Velocity or Intensity and, he's, and he thought to himself, um, I can, the dead talk, well, um, I see dead people, something like that kind of deal. Uh, they don't talk. I don't know why they don't talk. Uh, and he just wrote that down off the side and put it away and then came back to it later and did a whole book on Odd Thomas. Now, with this one, it, it, there's, the, there's the rat elements, there's all the coon scene elements, but what really, really helps this book out is the writing. Um, I was I was reading along with with this one. He's nowhere near as repetitive. Uh, you can see hints of his more uh, literary stuff, like he's coming out with nowadays, like the city, so on and so forth. It, this one was less about uh, the the action and and the suspense and the tropes and all that stuff. It was more about a character drama. Um, the 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 relationship between these two people, and especially the boy and Joey, the the boy that is hunted down by this cult is a fantastic character. Uh, as you're going along, you, you, see, you see him start to deteriorate as a child might, and he grows inward. He grows inward because of the crazy shit that's going on. Another thing, this book is brutal as hell. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. that I don't want to spoil, but there's a certain scene uh, with, with knowing Kuntz, uh, Kuntz's work like I do. There's a certain scene in here that I was utterly shocked by. Of course, the ending kind of nullifies that, kind of, I, I, I guess you'd say. Um, another thing is there's, uh, there's bats in this one, and there in The Vision, I believe there's bats in that one, too. Um, either that or it's birds, it's a swarm of birds. I don't want to give the scene, but, uh, it's, it's another thing where, you know, he's, he's going back to stuff He's starting to repeat stuff that he did earlier on in his career as far as you can see where the ideas for the next book that he publishes is coming from. So I thought that was really cool. I'm giving this one all kinds of stars. I'm giving it five stars. I had a blast with it. had a lot of fun with it. I also read it much slower than usual. We took several b breaks uh, because sh her internet went out and my internet went out. Um, and we just kind of took our time with it. I think it took about a week and a half to read it 
and I enjoy just taking my time instead of speeding through it like I normally do with a Koontz book because the writing's so simplistic you just don't get caught on anything and nothing strikes you. But in this one you start to see where he wants to do a little bit more. But uh, have you read The Servants of Twilight? Let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, these Koontz reviews are now going to be going to one a month. Uh, because I'm now caught up with the retro reviews. Uh, I have several different options as far as the retro v reviews are concerned. I want to go back and review McCammon's stuff in order, uh, Straub's stuff in order, uh, Polonix's stuff in order, that kind of thing, as far as retro reviews. Um, if I ever reread them, I will do, I will do actual, you know, uh, reviews after that also but uh, you guys let me know if there are any authors you want to see me do retro reviews on if there's authors you know I've read that I ha that you don't think I've reviewed just go ahead and leave that down there in the doobly doo uh, just to let you know I'm going to be doing a series of Clive Barker reviews in chronological order with Cammy's with the, uh, my friend Cammy over at Cammy's Corner we'll be doing that I'm still going through all of uh, Haruki Mikami's books, uh, that kind of thing. Anne Rice will be another one I'm going to be doing. So uh, if you mention those, those are coming. Actual reviews of those books are coming. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Dean Koontz review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!